Welcome to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Malone. I'm joined today by Jose Cueto, the CEO of International Finance Bank, located in Miami, Florida. He joins us for our discussion on the COVID-19 pandemic. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video to watch more insights like these. Jose, it has been a whirlwind these past couple of weeks, and I wanted to start off by looking at how the pandemic has affected your products and services. Have you seen an increase in certain services or maybe a downward projection for other uh, uh, products? I would tell you it's, it's been a neutral effect. I think what you've seen is generally a shift from what has always kind of characterized the kind of bank that we are. We're a very boutique, hands-on bank. And what's really happened is you've seen customer shift from that inherent relationship, which has always been pick up the phone, call my banker, to really, you know, more to an online type of experience. You know, we've always offered that, but I think, you know, our bread and butter has always been the personal touch. Um, so you're seeing a lot more clients, you know, shifting over to mobile banking, cash management, remote deposit capture, um, you know, really banking in a remote fashion. I think that's really the biggest shift. I think in terms of volumes, you know, I think it's neutral. You know, I think that we are seeing a lot more demand online um, versus the in-person type of, of interaction, which just kind of goes along with the general theme of, you know, social distancing and the other measures that have been put in place by businesses. The uh, PPP and the CARES Act have obviously been getting a lot of attention. What has been your specific inter uh, interaction with the PPP here locally? Um, you know, we jumped on it right away. We knew that, you know, we needed to help our clients. You know, we took it a step further and we decided to help, you know, businesses that were not clients of the bank. We we thought there was an opportunity and I think, you know, the bigger banks really did not do a good job in rolling out the PPP. So in the first round of funding, you saw a lot of small local businesses, you know, kind of hit desperation mode, really looking for an opportunity to get funded and to really save, you know, their businesses and to kind of stay afloat. So we immediately jumped on the program, invested in the program, and we did close to $17 million of funding in the first round Great. for approximately somewhere between 175 and 200 clients and non-clients. And then in this second round, we are already gonna be, we've already surpassed $25 million and close to 275, both clients and non-clients. So, you know, I think, you know, as a CEO, my, my first, you know, priority was let's take care of the community. You know, this is not, you know, these, these loans, you know, are what they are. You know, they're definitely not the typical types of loans that we're used to granting, but really, you know, I think we play an important role as the lifeline to a lot of these businesses. So kind of shifting, you know, I'd say we shifted 75% of the bank's resources into being able to do these PPP loans. It's a, it's, it's a ton of work. Um, it requires, you know, everybody all hands on deck and we've really, felt that that's the biggest way that we can give back to our community right now is to make it easy on clients and give them a, you know, give them peace of mind, you know, let them know that, Hey, this bank that's always been here for you is going to continue to be here for you. And if you're a client who had a bad experience somewhere else, we're also going to open the door for you as well. So that's what we did. You know, shifting all of those resources, 75% of your resources to address the PPP um, is a huge shift. Have you experienced particular innovations or are implementing certain technologies to enable you to adapt to this type of environment? And do you see that continuing post COVID-19? I mean, I think a couple of things come out of this is that, you know, the, the confirmation that we can work remotely and maybe, you know, the lesser importance of, of physically being in one location to effectively be able to execute, you know, on a business model. Um, in, in terms of technologies, yes, we did. In the second round of funding, we did invest in software that would enable us to be able to input applications while we waited for the government to open up the second round. So that when they did, all we really had to do was do a mass submittal versus the first round where we actually had to go into the SBA portal and one loan at a time, input it, wait for the approval. So, I mean, it, it was really more about having horsepower in place to be able to, you know, really help, you know, all of those who missed out on the first round, which was a lot, 
you know, so we knew that there was going to be a ton of demand for it and that we knew we'd be in the forefront as we usually are, you know, and rolling up our sleeves and doing everything in our power to help our clients and, and the non-clients really, I didn't ever give any indication, you know, that we weren't going to handle everything that came our way. And that's effectively what we've done. Excellent. And should our viewers want to find out more information about International Finance Bank, where would you direct them? Um, they can go to our website. It's www.ifbbank.com. And Excellent. there's information there about PPP, our role, stimulus checks, and a lot of advice, you know, to both, you know, clients, non-clients, business owners about how to manage this process and the things that we're doing here to help them out. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much. That was Jose Cueto, the CEO of International Finance Bank. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to watch more insights like this. My name is Abby Malone, and you've been watching Invest Insights. Thank you again.